Hi guys, welcome to this session in Microsoft Excel. In this module, I want to show you how to do data validation and in particular how to do a conditional data validation list. So first of all, let's have a quick recap of how to do a basic data validation drop down list. So on this screen at the moment, I've got a few examples. In cell A3, there is a drop down list with a, some instructions there. When I click the arrow, it gives me a list of codes. Now, these are the codes, so I can click on one of these, and then this information changes to reflect whatever I change. So this is basically a VLOOKUP going on there. So if I put this to ABC, it's going to come back with nuts and two pound. Well, one pound each. So that's the validation list there. Uh, I've got another one over here, which is a list of courses, just listing these courses. And if I type anything that's not in the list, so if I type something that's not in the list, I get a message coming up with telling me that that's not correct. So I have to select from the list. That would be the same in this one as well. Naughty can't you read? So you can put any message you like in there. So you have to be selecting one of these now let's recreate this one by clicking at this cell and just format that yellow for a second so data validation is on the data tab data validation and then this box comes up and it says any value so this first example i want to do a list but you see all these other ones list the source is this list and then you've got the input message where you can give it a title and a name. So only these codes. And then you can put a message there. You've got options. Error. Wrong code. So that's what's going to come up if they do a wrong code so there's your list you click away you get your list you do a wrong code it comes up with whatever you've put in that part of the data validation dialog box cancel so that's that one so that list was there now if I just do another example underneath if I go back into data validation you can actually type a list so if I go list and then just type it so if I just go 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. 1, 2, 3, 4. OK. That gives me that option. So I can, it's just picking up the formatting from there. You can just type it. You need to separate it with a comma. All the other things apply as well. This one is where I've used a named range. So this named range is called courses. If I highlight this list, this is a list called courses. Which is obviously on a different sheet. So if I do that one there, colour that a different colour. Same thing, data validation. Change that to list. So type equals and then courses. And then you click OK to that. Then you have the different courses there. Now some of the other options you've got, if I click into this one, it says enter a number between 1 and 100. It's fairly straightforward. So you've got whole number between 1 and 100. So anything outside of that is going to come up with an error message. So if I type 1, 2, 3, it's going to come up with an error message that you've got in there. This one is a date range. So if I go into data validation, it's got a date range between the 1st of April 2021 and the 31st of March 22. So any date outside of that so if I put today's date in there that gets an error message coming up like so and then this one if we go into data validation this one is a custom option and it's just equals I16 it's got to be greater than 100 say for example you can put functions in there as well so if I put one in there, I'll get an error message. Put one, two, three, should be okay. 
Okay, it is. So they're all different options that you can use. Now this green table or green area is using a function. So if I go to this one, you can see it's set to custom from this list and it's using the counted function. Now the whole of the green area, is, which is M1 to N10, is locked, dollar signed. And then comma M1. So M1 is, obviously that's the top left hand cell, but that it is basically tricking this to be in any active cell. If it's equal to one, that's true. That means it can only be one of whatever's in these cells. If it's more than one, it'll come up with false and then trigger the, the error message. So I just type something in there. One is okay. One is not okay. No duplicates. Two would be okay. Three, uh, three. Three would be okay. Another two would not be okay. So it stops you putting the duplicates in there. So I'll just show you that one again. Data validation. It's using the countif function, locking the actual range, and then using the first cell, which tricks this into thinking that's the active cell, equaling one only. This red table is only allowing text to be entered. So if I highlight that, I'm just going to that. This is text, that area. Is that area text? So if you put a number anywhere, it doesn't like the number. So I'll cancel that off. But I can put text in there. So that's just a few of other examples. Now the linked list example has to work, or does work, with named ranges. So I've got a couple of examples here. First of all, I've got a list of vegetables, and I've called the vegetables vegetable, and the fruit fruit. These two items are called type, and then in there, there's a data validation list looking at the name range called type, which is what we just did. Now, when I select from this cell, this data validation here as well, look, I'll only see vegetables. If I change vegetable to fruit and then select this cell, now I only see fruit. So this is what I want to do. This is a conditional data validation list. How it works is it uses the indirect function, which is in the data validation box, which I'll show you in a second, but let's have a quick look at indirect. So in that cell there, F1, I've got cell, it says A5. The indirect function is looking at F1 and coming back with the word carrots, because a5 is in F1, A5 says carrots. If I change that A5 to A3, that now says potato, because in cell A3 it's potato. So that's what the indirect function is doing. Whatever is in that cell, it's telling you what it is. So if you put that in there, it's going to look at this. And because that's a name range fruit, it then displays fruit. Or if that said vegetable, it would then display vegetable. So let's have a quick look at that. Data validation, so it's leaving it on list and it's putting it there. Look, indirect C2, so it's looking at C2 and C2 says fruit. Fruit is a named range, so it brings that back. If I change that to vegetable, this will now only show me vegetable because that is a named range and that is a named list. So this example down here, hospitals, so you've got three hospitals, which are called trusts. These two are called Newcastle, these three are called Northumbria, and these two are called Bradford. Now, the indirect function will look at this, so I select a hospital, so this will now only show me the Newcastle hospitals. So this list, this data validation is looking at these trusts. So it's the same as this one. So if I go into data validation, it's looking at trusts. That's okay. The indirect function is looking at that. So if I go into data validation, indirect is looking at I8. I8 says Newcastle. 
Newcastle list is this these two so it's only showing me those two now if I recreate that on a blank sheet if I get myself um, a list I'll just zoom this in and create a list so I've typed the list I'll just color this in a little bit so I'll make those two yellow and I'll put some color on this area just make it lime green or something or whatever color that is right so what I need to do is I need to name this area first of all so I'm going to call these two process so process and when you name things you've got to press enter so this area is going to be called start now I could get the computer to do this but I want to do it manually just to show you I highlight these three and call it end it's not case sensitive when you're typing names so we've now got three names we've got process start and end now in this area we need to look up so we have start and end in this list so it's a list option so we go for list and it's equals process I'm not going to bother with the messages just click OK to that and then I get the two processes so now the indirect function needs to look at whatever goes in there so again data validation list and then it's equals indirect in this case c2 close the bracket click okay. select end shows you the end select start shows you the start So then you can set whichever one you want from there and if you clear that off afterwards pick a different option and then you just get those those options. So that's data validation with a conditional second list. Conditional data validation. So hopefully this has been quite a useful little video for you. Thank you for your time and I'll see you in the next one.